First off, let's start with what won't be in the video. No starting zones, like the Tears Full Glades or Gildneus, and no max level zones, like the Tanan Jungle, Siramar, or Argus. This will only be a list of zones that are pure leveling and not created to tell a story, like Siramar. And I'll be prioritizing zones that tell a good story over just being purely lore significant. Now let's get started. At number 10 we've got the Boren Tundra. On the Alliance side, the zone starts off pretty standard. You go in and meet up with the general in charge and he sends you on typical fetch quests and kill X things. Then, during one of your quests, you come into a group of cultists below one of the transport ships. And after telling the person in charge about it, he basically just brushes it under the rug and tells you to go do something else, far away from the keep most likely. Then you have secret meetings with the other people in the town and all of a sudden it turns into a political mystery. You have to keep doing quests for the people in charge, while at the same time trying to sniff out the hidden cultists and finding out what happened to Thalsarian, who was sent out on a suicide mission. Through a series of quests, you find out where Thessarion is at, and help him break into the floating necropolis, where you finally find the mastermind behind the infiltration of the Alliance base, and interrupt a meeting with the Lich King. On the Horde side, you're given a series of suicide quests by young Garrosh Hellscream, who doesn't like you very much and just kind of wants you to get killed in battle, and gets more increasingly annoyed every time you succeed. With the culmination of finding out that Kel'Thuzad himself was in charge of the forces in the zone, and Sourfang comes in to save the day by just murdering an entire army by himself. Plus, there's the one quest chain in the Mage Tower, which made it onto my top 10 morally questionable quest video, and the whole zone of Kul'Dara, which is just ripe with blue dragonflight lore. Honestly, this is one of the few zones that has a good alliance and Horde storyline, but I will admit the Alliance one is better. And the only reason it's so low on the list is because it also has some of the worst side quests ever. At number 9 we've got the Dread Waste. This zone was one of the higher level zones in Miss, so rarely did people actually do it after Mist of Pandaria was over. And to all the people who skipped the zone, they're missing out, like I did. You see, I avoided the zone in Miss until I was forced to do it to unlock the rep vendors. Because back then, you needed rep with all the major factions to spend your valor points on starter gear. A stupid system that Blizzard introduced in Mist of Pandaria and then never tried again since. And I just really did not care one bit about the zone full of bug people. It seems stupid and boring like Silithus, and man, have I ever been so happy to be wrong. The story with the Calaxi and Awakening the Paragons was fantastic, and read like a really unique sci-fi story, where you go in and wake up all these champions of the Calaxi who were frozen in time during their prime, to be used at a later date when they'd need their full power. And after awaking all of them, learning about their specific backstories and why they were considered the best of their time, you learn at the very end that the Kalaxi serve the old gods and are enemies of the titans and their creations. Which was a big reveal at the time because I don't think we've ever really helped out a faction in game as much as we did the Kalaxi that ended up being an enemy in the end. When Garrosh uncovered the heart of Yasharaj, the Kalaxi sadly went to join his side as they do warn you that they'd fight for the old gods should they ever return. And I always felt bad killing the Kalaxi in the Siege of Orgrimmar. In fact, because of that fight, I made one of my very first lore videos on the channel about the Kalaxi, which is really bad and I don't suggest watching it. But I do highly suggest questing through the Dread Waste to learn more about the paragons of the Kalaxi. Number 8, Frostfire Ridge. The Horde starting zone for Draenor. Now I know the circle jerk in the WoW community is to say that Warlords of Draenor was the worst expansion ever. But what if I told you everyone loved the expansion to bits when it first came out? The questing experience in Warlords of Draenor was top tier, and there are very few people 
Who could disagree with that? And Frostfire Ridge surprised me by having a full character arc with Duraton's brother, while at the same time telling a pretty generic story. The Iron Horde is attacking, and we must help stop them. But it's so much more than that, and most of that involves Gnar. And well, I made a whole video about that storyline. Basically, Gnar's story is just told well takes place all throughout the zone while never being specifically about him, and has a satisfying conclusion in the zone's ending cinematic. Plus, the zone is chock full of good side quests and tons of lore about Thrall's Frostwolf tribe. Number 7, Dragon Blight. Oh boy, where to start with Dragon Blight? How about the whole quest lines leading up to the Wrathgate fiasco? One of the fan favorite cinematics in the game, like ever? Or how about the initiation of the Tonka into the Horde, detailing the specifics on how you join the faction and what it means to be part of the Horde. There's also the first ever appearance in WoW of Rokon in the zone, who will most likely be the leader of the Darkspear Trolls. There's the quest that made it into my morally questionable quest video, where you go out into the field and kill the prisoners rather than free them. The quest in which one of your men was captured by the cultists and forced to work with them, and then later on learned that they were sabotaging the cult from within the whole time. There's helping out representatives of the dragon flights and learning more about them. The zone just has so much going on, and has multiple quest chains that are worth checking out. Even if it is filled with lots of standard quests as well. Honestly, it's only as high as it is on this list because of the whole Wrathgate thing. I can't really stress how big of a deal that was. We even still see traces of it today, with having to fight Varimothris in the Antorus raid, who was directly responsible for that and was punished severely for his failure. Number 6, The Badlands. The Badlands have two things going for it. For one, it's home to one of WoW's most like quest chains, the day Deathwing came in which three people tell you the events of what went on when Deathwing came and messed up the zone. And there's Rathion's backstory, the quest chain of how Rathion became the only black dragon free of corruption, which turned out to be a pretty big deal, and Rathion went on to become a major lore character. You literally get to see the origins of a central lore character take place in game, which is rare and totally worth leveling in the zone to check out. And also, Rathion is by far my favorite lore character, which means I give it an extra recommendation. Number 5, The Spires of Iraq. In the zone of Iraq, you find out the lore of the Arakoa, which is pretty self-contained from the rest of the Iron Horde story. Well, for the most part. The Iron Horde absolutely does show up and do things, but the Spires of Iraq are this high on the list because of its Arakoa lore. The Arakoa are interesting. As you see, the Spires of Iraq were unique when compared to the rest of Draenor because it was protected from the overgrowth and Gorgoron giants by the three Arakoa gods. And throughout the zone, you learn more about these gods and even come into contact with two of them as you help out a literal god and fight and kill another, in a fight that was lore important enough to really warrant its own raid. You also learn about the lore of the outcasts, the cursed Arakoa, and how their first king was literally a one-man army, as you relive some of his past exploits. Now what makes Spires of Iraq neat is the fact that it essentially tells its own contained story from the rest of the zone, while at the same time being relevant to the main storyline overall. The Spires of Iraq is also where the garrison of Admiral Taylor in his quest chain is located, and tells the story of how he died, and has a little bit of lore with Rathion. And it also introduces Ishkar, who eventually betrays his people and joins the Legion, and is a boss in Hellfire Citadel. I think the whole story in the zone is told well, and the zone introduces some interesting characters, and was always my personal favorite zone in Draenor. Number 4, The Stone Talon Mountains. I spent a very long time in Northrend Crown. I learned much about the Horde in that time. While there, 
A wise old war hero told me something that I would carry with me forever. Honor, Kromgar. No matter how dire the battle, never forsake it. Now, the story in Stone Talon Mountain, or the Horde side anyway, which is the side I recommend for the zone, takes place lore-wise after the Alliance attack on Northwatch Hold, with Garrosh assigning some of his best men to take the area. You, as the player, start out as a grunt and up your rank as you go out and help with the war effort by planting landmines and taking out spies and such. As you go up in rank, you start interacting with the general in the area himself, Kromgar, and get caught in a sticky situation. Kromgar has a bomb he really wanted to use on one of the strongholds the Alliance had, but his plans didn't quite work out. So instead, he focused his efforts on the tree that a lot of druids were hanging out in. Kromgar thinks the druids are building an evil weapon in the tree, and you're sent in to check it out. During your investigation, you find out that it's not a military target and just a place of training for the druids. Kromgar disagrees, and you spend the rest of the zone story trying to stop him and help the Torn in the zone who are being framed for treason. All to no avail. You actually don't succeed, and Kromgar destroys the tree. Then Garrosh comes in and kills Kromgar himself for using excessive force on a non-military target. You see, people like to cite this whole interaction as an oversight in Garrosh's character when they point out that Garrosh did the same thing to Theramore. But if you read the novel Tides of War, the novel specifically points out that all non-combatants were evacuated from the city of Theramore before the battle began, and that Garrosh didn't even drop the bomb until they'd been fighting for about a week or so. Garrosh's plan was to take out a military target, not kill a bunch of civilians like Kromgar did. And the fact that this zone even starts a discussion like this means it's worth checking out to an extent. It tells a single narrative, and I think its story is told well and it's a must-check-out zone for its lore. Number 3, Azuna. Can you hear me, my friend? I, I, I cannot see you anymore. I think... perhaps it is time to say goodbye, then. Azuna is a high recommendation for two reasons. For one, the story and lore behind Prince Ferrandis and two, the story of Runus the Shamed. When you first meet Prince Ferrandus, you notice that his people don't like him very much, with one of the first things you hear is someone saying, is that an assassin here to kill the prince? Good. Which immediately intrigued me. Why did his people hate him so much? Later on in the zone, Ferrandus will follow you around, and whenever you come across his people, they will either like spit on him or tell him to die, while Ferrandus just meekly accepts it and even apologizes to them sometimes. While all this goes on, he will never actually tell you what happened. And more surprisingly, he'll show you that he's strong as hell. Like crazy powerful. While walking around with him, if you guys are attacked by something, he'll just summon a bunch of meteors on them and just one-shot everything that gets hit. Which just builds more anticipation behind the mystery of Ferrandis. And then eventually, you find out what happened to him. You confront Queen Ajara herself, and he saves your life. After his whole story concluded though, I remember thinking to myself, wow, that was a good story. I hope we hear more from him later on, and wasn't expecting much until I came across Runus. You start off your meeting by trying to kill him like you did all the other Withered Nightborn you came across in the zone. Only this character pleads for his life and promises to help you out, all while giving off major hints that he'll end up betraying you. Then as the zone goes on, he helps you out by telling you exactly what you need to do to take down the Withered and the Nightborn in the area. All the while, the Blue Dragons are telling you to watch your back as he'll probably betray you at any moment. As it turns out, no, his information was all correct, and he just keeps helping you out, all the way until the last second. With an army of withered attacking the blue dragons, and while you help them out, 
you meet Runa's one last time in the cave behind where all of this chaos is going down. And after you accept his final quest, he has a bit of dialogue that you don't actually have to listen to. It's not necessary, but is just him finally losing his mind and dying to the mana addiction. With him in so many words thanking you for making his last few hours mean something. Thank you, my friend, for letting my last few hours mean something. Number two, the Hillsbrad Foothills. Now, the Hillsbrad Foothills is like a masterpiece of a zone. It has one of the most loved quests in the game, Welcome to the Machine, in which you sit on a horse and become a quest giver for three characters and send them off on nonsense quests. Then later on, you will find them questing in Hillsbrad and end up helping them out. Now, Hillsbrad also has a few notable quest chains in addition to having one of the best quests. So let's first start off with the Sludge Fields. The Sludge Fields is a place that has gone AWOL from the undead, and you're sent in to see what's going on. Once inside, you find out some pretty dark things. Basically, they were up to some stuff that even the undeads weren't okay with, which is saying something since the Forsaken are kinda evil. Part of the place has a field of humans buried up to their necks, with ghouls jumping around and bashing their heads in, and it's your job to blend in and take the place down. Then later on in the zone, you meet up with Orcus the Kingslayer, who is drowning in shallow water, and it's your job to tell him to simply stand up. Just like with Runus and Azuna, I was expecting just more comical interactions with Orcus and his shenanigans as you go around and quest with him and his dragon. But through your dumb little quests, you actually find out something important and get caught up in some real shit. During the altercations, Orcus fights off a group of aligned generals by himself before his dragon swoops in to save you both, only for Orcus to die from his wounds on the way back to Terran Mill. After the quest chain is complete, Orcus's skeletal dragon will fly around Terran Mill and just perch herself on top of things randomly. And if you see her as a ghost, you can actually see Orcus's ghost riding on her still. So with two good quest chains, two very memorable one-off quests, Hillsbrad is also where the Plants vs. Zombie quest is located, and lots of comedy mixed in with lore, it's really hard to find a zone that's better than Hillsbrad Foothills. Number 1. The Silver Pine Forest now, Silver Pine Forest tells the story of one of Warcraft's major actors, the future war chief, Sylvanas, and raises questions in lore that are still being explored even today. Like, what do the Forsaken have to do now that the Lich King is dead, when their whole identity was built around killing Arthas? Plus, it introduces all kinds of new lore figures, including this guy right here, Deathstalker Commander Belmont. You want to know why Blizzard thought him important enough to include in the Rogue Order Hall? Well, largely because of what he did in Silver Pine. But to sum it up, he's just a badass rogue. Most likely one of the best in the world. The story of Silver Pine is basically just helping out the undead fight the worgen over Gilneas. And a lot of your quests are given from Sylvanas herself. I have not always been the Banshee Queen. And my people have not always been the Forsaken. Long ago, this land comprised the northern kingdoms of Lordaeron, ruled by King Terranus Menethil. Terranus had a son named Arthas. Arthas. Even saying his name makes my body quiver in rage. This man-child, Arthas, took for himself a cursed blade, known as Frostmourne. Through Frostmourne, Arthas killed his own father, and raised this land along with every living creature in it. My own death came at the hands of Arthas, when he and his armies sacked my homeland, Quel'Thalas, and murdered my people. In his vast cruelty, Arthas severed my spirit from my body, and raised me as a banshee to serve in his scourge army. A 
similar fate befell all that would die to the Scourge War Machine. In death, they were reborn as mindless undead, but Arthas was not invincible. With each passing day, his power waned, his grip over the will of the damned loosening. It was when Arthas was at his weakest that I struck. And though the hour of his atonement had come, the worm managed to escape his fate, returning to the frozen wastes of Northrend. With Arthas gone, so too was the control he held over the undead masses of Lordaeron. After recovering my body, I freed the remaining scourge that were left behind. From the cruelty and mercilessness of Arthas, the man who would be Lich King, the Forsaken were born. Our goal, our sole purpose, was to destroy the Lich King. We threw our lot in with the Horde and begin our journey towards redemption. Now, the Lich King is dead, and we have returned. The people who called this land their home in life do so in death as well. But the Alliance does not recognize our rights. They claim this land as their own while attempting to invalidate the claims of the founders of this kingdom. I will never allow it. Never! Lordaeron belongs to the Forsaken. Always and forever. Halfway into the zone, you actually go into Gilneas, and the questing plays a lot like a spy thriller. You're behind enemy lines and you have objectives you need to fulfill. This was one of the few zones that actually had me stop to think. Wow, this is fun. I actually want to know what happens next. Eventually, you find out about the death of Lord Vincent Godfrey and bring him back to life, so that the Forsaken could use his knowledge as an ex-high-ranking member of Gilneas to shift the war with the Worgen into the Horde's favor, which all culminates into a standoff which ends with Sylvanas actually being killed by Godfrey, who runs off to Shadowfang Keep and pushes Sylvanas' obsession with death even further. Silverpine Forest is without a doubt the best zone in the game for the lore. Watch your clever mouth, bitch! It tells its story well, the quests are fun for the first time through, it introduces new and unique characters, has major lore significance, has a satisfying conclusion, and tells a complete story, while also setting up future events. It's pretty much the perfect zone, and even die-hard Alliance fans who are also fans of lore and hate Sylvanas, will agree that Silverpine Forest is at the very least top tier. Okay, and that's the end of the video. I guess I could do a few honorable mentions. You see, when I make a top 10 list, I put a whole bunch of things on the list with a few notes on all of them, and then I'll pick the 10 best from that list. So, some other zones that almost made it into the video include Red Ridge Mountain and its Kishan quest chain, the Southern Barrens for its morally gray fight between the Horde and the Alliance, the Eastern Plaguelands for its Fiona's Caravan quest chain, Ungoro Crater for Maximilian of Northshire, Mount Hyjal for lore on the Ancients, and the Jade Forest for the introduction into the lore of the Shah and the Horde and Alliance conflict. Ultimately, I thought the 10 on the list were better, but these were all considerations.